Okay, now let's look into the functions of the various dimensions that are available in the AutoCAD menu. So towards this, we have uh, uh, two different ways of specifying this in the GUI space. So one thing is, here you can see that in the menu bar, we have this dimension menu, where you can see the various menu that are pertaining to the dimension. We have the quick dimension. Then in the linear segment, you have the linear, aligned, arc, length, uh, and ordinate. Whereas in the angular, we have the radius, jog, diameter, and angular type. And then again in the dimension line, so whether to start the dimension based on the baseline variation or to continue the dimensions, and then define what's the dimension space and breakers. Then also additional annotation commands for the next dimension that is multi-leader, specification of tolerance, then specifying the center mark, then inspection dimension, and jog linear dimensions are there. And then we also have oblique dimension and also text that are placed onto it, like what is the portion to it, how it is aligned to the uh, dimension space. Next, specify the type of the dimension, then override and update of dimension and rear section. So these are the various dimension commands that are available. So likewise, you can also use that in the annotate tab. In annotate, we have this dimension segment wherein we have the quick dimension here and other dimension categories are portions here and the all the what we have seen in the dimension toolbar is available in here also you have this you know, extension bar to specify the same and also as continuing we have the center mark and center line and then multi leader line and again leader variation is where we have this also in this home tab itself in the annotation tab we have an option to specify the quick dimension or other linear dimension categories. So these are all what is available in your uh, ribbon and menu bar. So likewise, in order to call these various dimensions, when you type in DIM, you can see the various prompts that are available. We have this the generic dimension, then dimension linear, radius, angular, diameter, and so on. So all that are pertaining with the DIM command all operates on the same dimension command. So let's look into one by one now. So to start off with, let's draw a rectangle here of some arbitrary dimension. So now let us invoke the dimension linear, the first command of first. So it is called by dimension LIN. So towards this, there are two methods of specifying the dimension linear command. It is the first one to specify in the origin points of the extension line by picking the point. The second way is to select the object directly wherein the associated dimensions are specified based on the selected object. So we'll go up the first method one that is to selection of the origin of the extension line. So here you have to specify the first point of the extension. So if you can recollect in the dimension sector we have seen like these Starting points are here, from there there's a gap and then the dimension extension line is drawn within which the dimension is marked. So we specify the first point and the second point. So now this first and second point can be taken in any order for a linear one. Now the third point is specified to position the height of the dimension line. So based on a text, uh, based on the object that you work on you can position it accordingly. So our third point was here. So now you can see that the dimension has been marked up and you can see that uh, the arrow heads are well defined. We have the extension line with uh, a gap between it and the text that is the dimension line position uh, right in between the dimension. So this is the first method of describing the linear dimension. So now the second method is selecting the object. So before going on to that, we will also see what are the other subsections that are available when we are taking it. So when invoking the dimension in a command again and selecting the first point of origin, then we have additional commands by that can be invoked or, or seen uh, using this command line. We will call in that again dimension linear. So once you select the first object and the second object here so 
So here before pressing on the third point, you can see the options that are available. The first one is the multi-text, multi-line text. Next is the single line text that is positioning the dimension in an angle or horizontal uh, dimensioning or vertical dimensioning selecting between those two or rotated base dimension. So you can choose any one of this. So suppose this we have to choose for the horizontal type, then we have to press on H so that now from those two points that are taken, it will try to push in the horizontal way. That is we are overriding the dimension. So this kind of thing will be useful when we are looking for a chamfered edge or so, wherein we have to vary between the horizontal and the vertical dimensions. So the next command what we have is in the dimension line linear. So here we have the again we look into the M text income. So that is if we type in the text option, then we can override the dimension by typing the text. So let's say that this is going to be the height of it. So typically what we are doing here is so now uh, if typically we were specifying the horizontal distance and hence the dimension has been positioned from the first origin point to the second origin point in a horizontal manner and without specifying the dimension width we are overriding this by using a text. So this M text is used to define a multi-line text whereas H will define a single line text. So these are the two differences. So also one thing is like when we call in the M text option it will display the in place editor, the text editor that we have seen. So, wherein we can edit the dimension text, that is, control the height of it or the font style of it, the bold italics alignment, those things what we have seen in text all applies to here. So, then in order to add a prefix or a suffix, then we have to enter the prefix or suffix text before or after the generate measurement, that is, we are overriding this. So, let's look into that command now. So, for accurating my PC, I am deleting it out. So dimension linear is called and the first point and the second point. Now let's select it to be vertical and now in vertical let us uh, select it as a M text. So now you can see based on this positioning of the cursor we can either define the text to be the prefix or suffix state. You can see when you click in the left or the right button, it jumps before or after the dimension. So suppose you can see the height is going to be the prefix and the mm is going to be the suffix. Then you can see that the prefix and suffix is added to the dimension line. So in this mtex command also you can add in the control codes or unicode character strings that we are seeing in the text command that is for the uh, diameter symbol or whatever symbol is called for we can specify those individual characters special characters using this control codes. So again to edit or the text then you can double click on it. So now it will call for the text formatting tool again. So now you can edit the text what you have entered here. So this is the M text command. So whatever style we have already selected that, that will apply to the command line here. So next again the other command is the text command. So this acts in similar line to the, the M text command. So, so here when the text command is called for, we can directly customize the dimension text in the dynamic input sheet as well as the command prompt. So now, let us say it is not 268.48, but rather let us say it is 250. So now, you can see we are overriding the dimension with a text that is fit into. So this is how your M text and M text command is going to vary. So next, uh, we will look into the angle command. So towards that, let's uh, construct a chamfered element. 
So for chamfering again, we'll call the rectangle command. But with the input specified for chamfer, let us say the chamfer distance is of uh, say 10 mm on both the sides. I mean both the lines. So now facing the rectangle here, you can see this the 10 mm and 10 mm is on this angle here. So let us call the dimension linear again to specify the uh, variation here. So now let's specify this like we have to measure this to chamfer distances. Now we can see that uh, for these two points, the default uh, alignment has been now taken as vertical. So now in order to override it, if you click on horizontal, you can see now we are getting the horizontal one. But suppose if you want to change the angle of the dimension text, then we can call in the angle command. And now we can specify the angle. Suppose if the text has to be rotated by 90 degrees, now you can see in the same horizontal command, the text alone has been overridden in this way. So by this, we can realign the dimension text alone so that it will improve the readability of your text. So this is the aligned angle way of doing it. So now let us say, uh, go back to it and specify as a zero element here. So this is one way of doing it. Suppose if you want to measure not the horizontal and not the vertical one, but rather the uh, the rotated variation, that is we want to measure this dimension, then that is affected by selecting these two points and then specify the rotated linear dimension option. So here again, the angle of dimension text is asked for. So we can specify say 45 degrees. Now we can see that the rotated angle for this linear dimension is positioned here. But do recollect that one of our basic rules of dimension is that the dimension should never cross each other. So suppose if you are arrived at this stage, then you can alternate the text by dragging the handles so that you can alternate the position or you can vary the distance accordingly. So this is important like how you position your dimension and select them. So this is a quick overview of the dimension linear command that we have seen. So it was that the second mode of selection was the selection of the object. So we will also look into that. So we will invoke the dimension linear and for selecting of object, you can either right click or press in enter. So once you do that, it will look for the objects that we have selected. Suppose if you want a quick dimension this object, then click on this. So now we can the automatic first and second extension font origin or specified based on the type of object. Suppose this is a line or an arc that is in this case. So the line or arc endpoints are used as the origin for the extension line. So the extension lines are always offset from the endpoints by the distance that we uh, will specify in the offset from origin in the lines and narrow. So that we will look in the next style when we are looking in the dimension style dialog box. But likewise, if this the dimension linear and select object is done, then suppose it for a, uh, not for dimension linear, but uh, this object selection is done for a circle, then the diameter endpoints or use as the origins of the extension line. When the point used to select the circle is actually close to the north or south of the quadrant point of the circle, then a horizontal dimension is drawn. When suppose the point is used to select the circle is the east or west, then a vertical dimension is drawn. So this north, west, eastern quadrant refers to the architecture way of approaching this. So that you can try it on your own and see how this dimension linear command is overridden for a circular element. Likewise for polylines or other objects that can be exploded or that is constituted by single individual elements, then only the individual line and R segments will be dimensioned. So this is about the selecting the objects for dimension linear through the select object command. So next in this line, we also have a instead of dimension linear that we can invoke the dimension aligned command to do the same objective that we have seen earlier for a, with dimension linear. So here again, when you invoke the additional menu, you can see that we will get the mtext text and angle command for this dimension aligned. 
So this is in a particular case set of the dimension linear command. So now going next for a circular element, the radius or a diameter. So to us this, let us one select a circle here and a circle here. These are two of different arbitrary dimensions. To dimension the radius first, we'll call for dimension radius. So once this is done, it last for the selecting the arc or the circle. So if you select this circle, you can see that the center point is directly placed and then based on our uh, positioning of the, in this case the second point, so then you can position your dimension of the radius. So you can see that the dimension radius command is prefixed by the R symbol that denotes that it is the radius. So also you can see that when the 90 degree position is exceeded, the text alignment also varies. So this is one feature of it and also by placing your positioning the uh, point either internally or externally, you can control this uh, positioning of the text inside here. So once that done, you can see if the uh, dimension is placed outside, the arrow is pointed inwards, whereas if the dimension is placed inwards, the arrow is placed outside. So this is for the dimension of the radius thing. So next, suppose if we are drawing an arc here, suppose let's say we call for a fillet of these two surfaces, specifying the radius, let's say 8 mm, and the trim is on. So in this case, when you specify the radius for dimension, you can see, suppose if we position it internally, that's an extension that is drawn, so as to continue the arc position. But remember that this is not a part of the drawing, but it's a part of your extension line. This is your extension line that is placed to position. But this is kind of misleading in a drawing, so always ensure that this is placed in a relatively readable position that does not confuse the originating point of the drawing. So this is about the dimension radius command and subsequently you have the dimension dia command for the dimension of the diameters. So here again the input requirement is an arc or circle, you can click on that. So likewise we have, you can position it either inwards or outwards and you can see there are two opposing arrow heads to specify the diameter and this will include the dia symbol as a prefix. So this is about the dimension dia command. So also we have one more command because in this case, suppose if you want to highlight the center point, then you can uh, call for the command called as dimension C E N. So this is the dimension C N T R dimension center. So once this is done, center mark is placed within the circle. So this is, will be easy for you know positioning your datum references or datum points if uh, called for from this circular element. This we'll see in the next session in tolerance. So this is your dimension center command. Next likewise, we also have the dimension angular command. So this is used for the angular dimensions between the two lines or three points in an arc. So towards this, let us construct an arc to visualize. So to start up with, we'll start with the center point of the arc and the start point and the end point like this. So, for each of this, we'll remove these dimensions. So now, you can see that we have uh, drawn an arc. So, to dimension this arc, we have to use this dimension angular command. We'll go with the first method that is selecting of the arc or the circle or line. So, do remember this angular line, angular command can also be used for the line that we have seen earlier. But now we'll focus on only arc and circle. So selecting the circle, you can see that the end points are directly considered and the angular between those end points is considered for this 
angle. So this is typically the angle between the start and the end point of this arc. So likewise, when before specifying the third point on the drop down menu or in the command prompt, you can see the additional options mpex, text, angle are available. So this is the usage of your dimension angular point. So one more option what we have here is the quadrant command. This is a very useful tooltip in the dimension angular command. If you want to specify this uh, angle outside of the extension line limit. So let us quickly see this with an example here and specifically in a linear line command to uh, showcase this. Suppose if we have an angular component here and you want to specify the angular dimension between these two lines. Okay. So, so here we can specify this. Suppose if you want to position this in a different quadrant, then you can specify which quadrant you have to position it. So based on this, we can extend the dimension line that is required. That is with this dimension, we are positioning this outside the dimension line extent. But this is not possible if we do not specify the dimension line. Also. You can see here, when we move on to here, it switches to the next dimension. Right. So this is where you can use this angular dimension in the quadrant segment to retain the same dimension intention but position the dimension text elsewhere outside the defined quadrant. So this is the use of the dimension angular command. So next what we are going to see is the baseline dimension. So baseline dimension what it does is it refers to a base dimension and then the other dimensions that we keep on selecting will be continued from that base extension line. So this we will look at with one example. So let us plot a line. So consider step kind of a, an object. Okay. So now let us dimension each every one of the step from this base reference line. Towards this, first we require to have the initial dimension set in place by the uh, linear or aligned or angular dimension. So we will go with this uh, dimension linear command. So once it is done and placed, now you can set in the next dimension with this as the baseline by dimension base command. So once the dimension is already available, AutoCAD considers the previous set dimension for reference. So the previous dimension is already referred to and that extension line is already taken. Now we can put in the second point, followed which the third point can be placed. So and so on and so forth. So this is the application of the dimension baseline. So what here we are doing is the baseline dimensions are going to be multiple dimensions measured from the same baseline. This is going to be the baseline. So continue dimensions are always referred from this baseline and measured from this end to end. So always the prerequisite for this is to, to have a linear aligned or an angular dimension that is already in place. So suppose in this current session of drawing, if there is no dimension was created, then you have to specify the base dimension that to be selected and then perform upon. But when the previous dimension is linear as in our case, then from the next point it directly considers and places it. So based on your requirement, you have to collect. So the main concern here is the base dimension is going to change based on the first dimension that you have uh, taken. Suppose if you have dimension this segment and then continue the dimension baseline, then from this either this way or this way your dimension will go in. So it all depends on the first point of dimension that you specify for the previous dimension command. So this is your dimension baseline linear command. So along with it, we also have an extension to this. We have this. So here when we prompt it, we can select a different command. So suppose if we select this as the baseline, you can see you can modify the base reference line. So this is one way of doing the dimension. Now we can see that the dimensions are selected if we go in the opposite direction. 
connects in the same dimension baseline if we have a base dimension as an angular dimension then we can continue with this similar to your linear line so uh, let us follow one popular autocad example that you might find uh, that is uh, measuring the slots that are placed along a arcual length okay so let us just quickly uh, draw it out so let us draw some element like this and then draw an arc so the center point of the arc is here and that point and the end point ok so let us use the open command and this right so now let us place a circular element here and let us use this array path command to mimic this element in this array and say four elements with some arbitrary distance like this so that it's equally spaced right so with this let's look for the angular dimension so let us go back to the angular dimension command so here if we want to measure the angle between this circle and this circle along this arc length then when by default when you select these two circles it selects this point and hence you can't measure the angle of it so towards this is where we use the vertex command so also recollect that you can quickly recall the previous command by clicking on enter so it uh, directly takes the previous command so now into this let us specify, uh, press enter again to select the vertex so now remember the vertex is uh, request three points for measurement first is uh, the measuring center point for that vertex and then the start and the end point of the measurement so for this in order to measure the angle between these two the vertex point is going to be here and then the first angle end point is this center and second angle end point is this so now you get to get the angle of it when you go for dimension baseline so you can see that the previous angular command has been taken here and now we can continue your baseline dimension from here so this is the use of dimension angular vertex for specifying an arcual element and also using the dimension baseline command to continue the angular dimensions